Hi, and welcome to this presentation on the persuasive essay. First of all, let's start with a quick definition of what persuasion is. The actual definition is it's a deliberate appeal to an audience's reason and emotions in order to create compromise, win agreement, change thoughts, or compel action. So anytime you have ever been persuaded, you have thought in a different way, you have acted in a different way, and you have done so because someone has appealed to your emotions. So maybe they use some tears or they have um, appealed to your, your logic or your thinking brain. And so they've made a logical argument for why you should act or think in a certain way. Um, if you can think back on, on just the past couple of days, you've probably been persuaded by someone. Um, if you have children, they're very good at persuading. Maybe your spouse has persuaded you to, to do something um, that you maybe weren't planning on doing. So persuasion is all around us. Um, politicians obviously are very good at it. Um, and so people use it all the time and it's important to understand what persuasion is so that you know you're not being duped by something. Um, down below, there are two examples um, about this idea of feelings and logic and, and your values. Um, a mayor may get elected because of her sensitivity to the poor, and so that's using emotion. Um, someone may get a later curfew because you've earned straight A's. That's more of a logical um, argument. So those are things that happen um, because of persuasion. So there are lots of elements um, of persuasion. One of the core um, elements of Persuasion is an assertion. An assertion is what it is that you want changed. So you could defend or attack a position. Uh, you could suggest a solution to a problem. You could recommend a change in policy, or you could challenge a value or belief. All of those would be assertions. An assertion is essentially your thesis statement in a persuasive piece of writing. So if you are saying, um, the death penalty should be abolished, that's an attack of a position. Um, if you say the death penalty is um, necessary as a, a way to curb crime, um, you're defending that position. To suggest a solution might be to reform um, the prison system, and so that's a, a suggestion or a solution. Um, recommend a change in policy, um, maybe we need to do more DNA testing, and maybe that's your persuasive um, assertion that we need to do more DNA testing in order to make sure that that we're doing it correctly um, and then to challenge a value or a belief that would be you know the, the belief that um, hard work is is necessary for success maybe someone could challenge that and say that's not always true um, so lots of things can be persuasion or persuasive um, the example down at the bottom that's given is that the college should give first priority for on-campus jobs to students who need financial aid and so if that was your claim or your assertion, um, then you would go on from there to defend that. More elements of persuasion. Um, within your content, you'll always have subclaims. So your assertion is, this is what I want um, changed. Your subclaims would be your, your main ideas. So, um, you know, we want the death penalty abolished. A subclaim could be because it's wrong. Um, number two, we could say because um, there's lots of mistakes and there's lots of innocent people who go to death row. Um, so those would be all of your subclaims. Um, counter argument is, is kind of a hard concept sometimes. What we have to think about when we think about a counter argument is if I were having this conversation with someone who disagreed with me, who was on the opposite side of my argument, what is it that they would say? What's one of their arguments? And then what I need to do is to kind of knock that argument down. And so when I talk about um, you know, saying the death penalty, um, someone who says the death penalty is good might say that, well, it curbs crime. And then what I would do as the counter argument, I disagree with that. I don't think that the, the death penalty is good. And so my argument would maybe be back to that person. Um, it doesn't actually curb crime. Um, in fact, it's dangerous because you're putting, you know, you're, you're perhaps killing people who aren't guilty of the crime to begin with. So I address that argument and then I flip it so that it, it works for me. Um, stating your counter argument is a very effective way of persuading because you're, you're kind of picking through all of what the other people would say and you're knocking down that argument and you're saying, well, you might say this, but this is why you're wrong. Um, and so it becomes very effective if you're trying to persuade someone on the other side. And then in terms of organization, organization in a persuasive essay is, is important. Most of the time you build your argument, and so you'll end with your most important point, the one that has the most 
um, weight in your in your mind. Maybe that's the one you have the most evidence for. Maybe that's the one that's most emotional. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why you may choose to end um, with that particular argument. In your appeal to readers, um, this is important because obviously you want to appeal to your audience um, because you want them to listen to you, you want them to judge you fairly, and you want them to agree with you. And so there's three main forms of appeal. There's an logical appeal, which is called logos. There's an ethical um, approach, which is called ethos. And then there's the emotional approach, which is called pathos. And you'll see an explanation of this on this slide. So if you click on um, the link here, or if you go to um, the content, you'll see that link um, as a separate piece. So here are all three of those um, appeals. The first one that we'll deal with is ethos, which is the ethical appeal. And, and what this means is, is that audience, or the, your audience, your readers, look to you as someone um, who is reputable, um, who's an expert, who knows something about the topic, and who can be trusted. And so if, if you are one of these people, and you portray that through your, your writing and through um, what you have to say, people are much more likely to believe you. You can establish this through a reasonable argument, through use of evidence, and through tone. Um, an example of this would be, you know, if you're writing about a topic dealing with community colleges, you can simply insert a statement that says, as a community college student, um, I have knowledge of this, um, I have experienced this. Those types of things really hit home for the audience and make you a reputable person, someone who can speak on this subject because you yourself are experiencing whatever it is that you're talking about. Um, if you don't have firsthand experience, that's okay. You can build a reasonable argument. Um, you can make it logical, you can make it well organized, um, and that also allows you to come across as someone who knows what they're talking about. Tone is the last one, and, and tone kind of gets to, you don't want to come off as maybe a rant. Um, you don't want your paper to come off as angry. Um, those kind of things will turn readers away, and they will perhaps make them even, um, they won't put them in your corner, they may do the opposite. And so you don't want, you want to be passionate. Being passionate about a topic is great. Um, you just don't want to cross that line and become disrespectful, angry. Um, you don't want to talk down to the people who um, you're trying to persuade. And so tone becomes um, an important piece of ethos. Moving on to the next slide talks about pathos. This is an emotional appeal and sometimes this is actually the most persuasive. We are persuaded by our emotions more times than probably we'd like to admit. And a lot of times we are persuaded by those emotions that make us feel sad or make us feel angry. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the commercial um, I know it plays on lots of stations, but uh, it's a very sad pet commercial. Um, I think they're in a shelter and they, they play Sarah McLaughlin's In the Eyes of an Angel. Um, and it's it very much pulls at the heartstrings. We feel very bad for those pets that look very sad um, with those puppy dog eyes. And so that's an appeal to our emotion. They're nowhere in that commercial. I don't think anybody says anything. There's no facts stated. It's just a, a direct emotional appeal. And so it aims for our hearts. Um, we are motivated, as it says, by emotions just as often as we are by intellect. Um, a lot of times we can be goaded into war based on emotion, maybe even without facts. Um, sometimes the opposite is true. Sometimes we want to fight and the facts aren't there. So um, we need to be aware of those things and when we're, our emotions are being played upon. Any of you who have kiddos, they turn on the waterworks. Um, sometimes that's a very persuasive method. The last emotional appeal, or the last appeal, sorry, for the reader, um, is a rational appeal, and that's the logos. That's where, you know, you, you appeal to the logical thinking brain. So you look at facts, and you look at statistics, and you look at expert opinions, and you look at um, stories and examples that illustrate what it is that you're trying to, to persuade people of. Um, and so this can also be pretty persuasive. Um, if you start pulling out facts and statistics and, and talking about your topic and, and why things are as they are. A combination of the three is probably the best option. So to use, um, you know, logos, so to use some, some thinking brain um, facts and statistics and support for your argument is good. Um, to use pathos um, or the emotional 
side of things is also a good option. Uh, and then the last one is, is to you know, make readers feel as if you know what you're talking about. And so the use of all three together can really make for a very persuasive piece of writing. All right, I thank you for li listening to this presentation. I ask you to look at those two YouTube videos that are listed after that um, and to use ethos, pathos, and logos in your own persuasive papers.